Sheldon, how do you see the trade, and have you talked to uh, Jeremy already about his role with the team? Yeah, I talked with Jeremy uh, yesterday and today, obviously meeting him for the first time here. But, uh, you know, I just see it as an opportunity for him to, to come in and, and have a fresh start with a new organization that's full of opportunity for players to come in and, uh, and make, their, make their mark. And um, he's a talented guy that's had a lot of success in the AHL and had a you know, taste in the NHL, obviously. And we'll do what we can, um, you know, to get him back there. And Junior, you would have, had, you know, seen a lot of the guys that uh, you would have made trades for already played against them. Uh, do you know much about them coming in? I don't know. Uh, don't know a lot. No, I've obviously spent time yesterday and again today, and we'll continue to to learn more about them and video and whatnot, and just chat with them and see them in practice and, and all those kind of things. But uh, you know, he's he's done more than enough to establish himself as a a guy that uh, you know will be, be a good part of our team and be able to. You know, step in and, and, and fill you know the the roles and responsibilities that that Patty was uh, was taken for us and um, Billy's got a good skill set and he's come in here uh, with the right approach and I think he's excited for the opportunity to just to get going. Is there a benefit here that there weren't hard and fast lines that you've been working with all year that when you lose a guy like Richard Ponick uh, it, it means maybe just a hair less? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think. Probably every AHL team is going through what we've we've we're going through and what we've gone through. Um, you know, you, you're mixing things up and your your lineups changing drastically day to day, week to week. Um, you know, so we'll uh, we had a little more of an informal skills day today, but we'll you know we'll put some lines together for tomorrow and and see how that works out. Scott Harrington, when he got sent down, one of the goals was to improve his puck possession, controlling the puck. What's he doing to to improve that? How do you improve that? Well, I think, first of all, is just getting more ice time. I mean, when you're doing that, you're getting more touches of the puck. Um, and when the game slows down a little bit, like it does at in, in the AHL in comparison to the NHL, you get a little more time to you know, get your head up and make a play and, and uh, start to recognize the, the patterning of the game a little bit better. Um, a lot of the systems and whatnot are are similar in the AHL to the NHL. It's, it's the speed and, and the execution of the system is a little bit better at the higher level. But you can start to recognize patterning and the plays and the, the spots that might open up for you. So, um, you know, I think really it just comes back to getting more touches and more reps and, and getting more comfortable and finding yourself. And obviously, he got banged up the other day, but uh, you know, he's he's a guy that works uh, works extremely hard. Um, very good person that's committed to getting better. So we like having him around here and, and want to you know help him to get what he needs. So he missed practice today with an injury. Yeah, he left the game the other day with an injury, so we're just waiting on the status. What's it been like to have Ray Emery here? I mean, you guys have had the goaltending carousel just with what was been happening with the Leafs and whatnot, but to have a veteran influence like him here, what's that been like? It's been nice. I mean, obviously, we 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 needed him um, at a time when when the you know the goaltending situation was uh, very much up in the air day to day about uh, you know what was going to happen really. With, with all three teams, you know, with, with the Leafs, ourselves, and, and Orlando, so um, he he filled in he filled in well for us and, and gave us the starts that we needed. But he, you know, the veteran presence has been has been great, and that's what we've you know as things are beginning to stabilize themselves a little bit in goal. That we've talked to him and just like having him around and. Uh, you know, today he's spending the day you know, around Garrett Sparks, and he's been around Rob Bedor and Antoine Bebo, and um, you know his his presence is is, is nice to have. And, and uh, in goal, that's that's unique. You don't can't always have that because, especially at this level, you want to have two young goalies that are you know looking for opportunities to get better, and, and to have a you know a guy like that in here, much like we would have you know uh, on the forward side of it or on the player side of it. You know, with Andrew Campbell and Richard Clune and uh, Johnson and Brennan and you know uh, Braddy, these kind of guys can help with the players. You got a presence there in the net as well. Do you expect to have the team in this position at this point? Like when you came in, took the job last summer, did you expect to be in first in your division this far ahead? Uh, I, I didn't have any real ex any real expectations in terms of where we would fit in the standings. Uh, uh, you know, everybody told me that we were going to have good good team and good players and and obviously the team last year finished off uh, extremely well and very strong um, so we had a sense that we would be very competitive and, and have a chance to compete with the top teams in the league where it all shakes out in the standings uh, you know I don't put too much thought into that frankly 
Um, we just thought we'd be competitive each day and we'd have a chance to, to win more often than not. But it's been good to, uh, you know, to work with our team. And uh, the best thing about our group is I feel, despite what, where we are in the standings, I feel like we have a lot of room to grow. And, and even, even when we, you know, we've had to play without players, we've been competitive, but I still think we can play better as a group. And, and, and we we're excited about the second half. The schedule has been uh, not too kind to us uh, to this point. We've played more games than most teams in the league uh, to this point, and, and, and many more than most in our division. So um, that's been difficult to contend with. But it's, you know, fortunately for us, we're in a good spot in the standings, and things will settle down a little bit for us here. And this week is a good example where we can actually spend some time practicing. I think. Uh, uh, you know, up until one practice we had last week, I think was our first practice, first full team practice in three weeks. And you know, previous to that, we had a lot of you know having to give guys days off and and whatnot because of the, the rigors of the schedule and the back to backs and three and threes and the travel. So things are settling down, and hopefully that can help us get to where we need to well, be as a team. Have you adjusted to the, the schedule and all the routines and everything at the, the American League now? I have. Uh, I feel like I have. I, I'm still learning. Um, you know, we have plans coming into the season, and um, I don't think it's. I don't think I'm unique um, in saying that. Sometimes you know you, you kind of toss plans out the window and you get really going because uh, you get a better feel for how the players are responding and how they're feeling. Um, you know, Gordonine has been been huge for me in terms of a resource of what to expect or you know experience in dealing with different situations. So we've adjusted uh, here and there with that. Um, we'll continue to adjust based upon how our team is feeling and how the group is feeling. And um, obviously, you're still keeping in mind that we're here to develop the players and we need to get them on the ice and we need to keep them in the video room and we need to make sure we continue to push them to get better and not always just focusing on the next game. Hey, Sheldon, I'm sure that coming into this, you would have anticipated that your relationship with Mike would have been open as it's going to be because he's the head coach of the Leafs. But has it been even better than you, you thought it might have been? Or how, do you, how would you term it? Yeah, you know what? I didn't. I didn't come in with any real expectations in that regard because I was told right from the start, you know, that that um, we would work closely together, and, and um, you know, I met with Mike, um, you know, through my interview process, and, and you know, before even being named to the position, um, and at that time he was very open, very easy to talk to, and uh, felt very comfortable. And then right from right from there all the way through to the draft with how our staff and, and the Leafs staff work together and then right up to training camp and everything. So I felt really good about that, and it's been great uh, great for me. I mean, I referenced Gordon and, and, and what he's done for myself and our staff, but certainly Mike's, Mike's presence and his ability to... Um, you know, to communicate with me and also pay attention to what we're doing, what our players are doing, and his willingness to, to communicate and, and keep me involved. I mean, I've been able to, you know, come around to these practices and sit in on their meetings and be around during some of their games when our schedule allows. And that's huge for my development, which I think I'm able to bring back to the guys here and, and help them as well, you know, help our team in developing our players. But I think that when you see a guy of his stature communicating the way he does, it's clearly going to trickle down to the guys in the bench. Yeah, uh, certainly, and that's really what I'm here for. And, and I think Mike recognizes, you know, the importance of the the young players that we have here, and the players that are ultimately going to end up being Maple Leafs. Um, so, you know, when I the more I can hear his message straight from his mouth, uh, it certainly helps my cause in developing the players to play for him and within that system. So, um, I, I think obviously part of it is because Mike has has. Uh, Welcomed, uh, welcomed me, and recognized, you know, the benefits that could come of it, uh, and the fact that we're right here in the same city uh, has really, really worked extremely well, and, and I'm grateful for it. It certainly has helped my helped me do my job. Casey Bailey is writing a three-game point streak for you. Uh, obviously, came to Toronto out of college, bit of a, a raw, unfinished product. How have you seen his development, particularly his play away from the puck, uh, as he's gone along here? We've been happy with his play away from the puck. We think he's he's a smart player that finds himself in the right spot a lot, and he's able to to uh, to take the things that we you know that we're teaching and we want to do positionally and and, and bring it to the ice. Um, the game I think has been real fast for him in a lot of different areas, and his offensive game hasn't been able to really come to life. Uh, so his play with the puck is something where we've, we're waiting for it to really fall into place. And you know he he was able to get on the sheet a little bit this weekend. Just po a positive, positive step, but um, he's got to continue to work 
to you know be able to be more of a threat offensively, get more shots on the net, be more of a guy to generate chances. Um, and you know we feel like his skating can really can you know continue to come along, and we'll work at that to to keep him on the puck, uh, keep him on offense more, and then you know he's we. I think he's in the right spot a lot of times, but if he can get there a little quicker, that would help his cause as well. So he's, he's got some work to continue to do, but it's nice to see him continue to work at it and keep a good attitude while going through it. How did you have to alter your approach coming from junior? Like, did you have to change the way you communicate with players, or is it the same because they're kind of similar age groups? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that I've changed a whole lot. Uh, certainly there's nothing that I've... You know that I've consciously thought of and said, oh, I can't do this anymore. I can't do that anymore. Um, we do. Coach. We do have a young group here, and and I, I do believe it's still just coaching players. The, the number one thing that I've taken away from you know my short time in, in professional hockey is that players do still want to get better. Players still are impressionable. Uh, players um, they want guidance. They want to win, and they want to um, they want to succeed. So they want help doing that. And, and that just allowed me to just be myself and, and, and coach. You know, all that said, we recognize you know different things like you know, schedule and, and the quality of competition and all those different things that come into play. Um, some guys are their bodies are older; they need more time off, and, and all those kind of things that are, are, are different than junior. But in terms of my day-to-day -day approach, uh, I don't think I've changed at all.